gospel, please. And we're turning to Luke's gospel, chapter 15, the gospel of Luke. And we're in chapter 15. We come to this great chapter of where we find the trilogy of parables. Parable of the lost sheep, and what a parable that is. One of the loveliest pictures that presents the gospel in all its clarity is called the parable of the lost sheep. And in that picture, you know, the Lord Jesus paints very clearly the sheep that is lost. It's not only lost, you'll see the sheep is lonely. It's away from the shepherd's tender care. And it's not only lost, and it's not only lonely, but I'll tell you something else about that lost sheep. It's limited. It's limited because, you see, that lost sheep is away on the hillside there, and it's exposed to the wild, wild beasts and the ravaging beasts, and it's only a matter of time until the beast catches no, dear unsaved friend, you'll never get a clearer picture than you this morning because in that lost sheep, that's the picture of every sinner. I'm telling you, unsaved friend, this morning, you're lost and you're lonely because the Bible says because you're, you are without Christ, you are without hope, and you are without God in this world. You're without God in life. And let me tell you now, you're, you're, you'll be without God in death. And you're limited because this life is going to end someday soon. And you're limited. And unless you're found before you go, friends, you'll be in hell. You're limited. But you know, friends, we all call that the parable of the lost sheep. Or we could also call it the parable of the loving shepherd because there's a loving shepherd in that parable. A shepherd that, re that risks life and limb to go after that one sheep that was lost. He leaves the ninety and nine in the wilderness and he goes out over the mountains and he goes out to find this lost sheep for me. I'll tell you, dear friend, Christ went to the cross to find you and never you forget. Me. You're lost and you're lonely and you're limited. But I'll tell you this, your love. Then we go to the other end of the, 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 the chapter. We come to the parable of the lost son. That's the parable of the prodigal son. And I'm telling you, the parable of the prodigal son has been a blessing to men. I remember my father on many occasions saying, where would we be if we hadn't the prodigal of the lost son? Because there was times there was problems in our home with my brother. You know, it offers hope till, till wayward children and for broken-hearted parents. There's the story of rebellion in that parable. There's the story of repentance in that parable. There's the story of returning in that parable. There's a, there's a story of receiving in that parable. There's a story of rejoicing in that parable. I'm telling you, when you sit down and look carefully at those parables, God has a lot to say through them. God has a lot to say to us this morning through the middle one, the second parable that we have here. Finding that, finding that what you have lost. Let's take a wee look at the second parable. And let's listen to the Lord Jesus this morning because in verse 8 he paints this another very powerful picture. Either what woman you know, here's the picture now. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver? If she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friend and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which I lost. 
know that the Lord will bless thy, those that two verses fill our hearts this morning for his own name's sake. Finding what you've lost is the theme, is the title, the thrust of the message God has for us this morning. Finding what you've lost. And you know, child of God, it's so true this morning. Nobody really appreciates anything that we possess. Listen, none of us really appreciates anything that we possess. Yes, we enjoy having it and whatever that may be, but nobody appreciates anything until we lose it. until we lose it. And that's true, child of God. Nobody appreciates anything. Nobody really appreciates anyone until the moment comes when we lose them. Yes, we are so glad when we have them, but we don't fully appreciate them until we lose them. You know, child of God, this morning I wonder if there's something you've lost. Notice the parable, notice the picture. Here's a woman this morning who, who had 10 pieces of silver. She had the 10. She had the 10. And she lost one thing. I wonder this morning, is there something you once possessed and you've lost? Your love for the Lord. You once possessed that deep longing <coughs> love for the Lord, but you don't. Maybe it's the joy of the Lord. Boys, there was a time there was a smile in your face, a song in your mouth, a spring in your step, but you don't have the smile. You don't have the song. When you're walking about as if it was a funeral, no, you don't have the, the joy in you. Have you lost them? Have you lost your love this morning for the Word? There was a time when you devoured the Word of God. Boys, you couldn't get enough of it. Now you don't look at it anymore. Ah, but listen, these things happen. I wonder this morning, have you lost something that's precious? Maybe your love for the Lord is precious. The joy of the Lord is precious. Your love for the Word this morning, it's precious. Ah, but you don't possess that any, anymore. You know what Paul said in Galatians? Galatians 4, 15, I think it is. Paul asked this question. Where is the blessedness that we speak? Where is it? Very quickly, very briefly. The Lord wants us to see thy things in his heart. But he wants to address the children of God. You see, it opens up with a woman having these ten pieces of silver, but here's something the Lord maybe wants us to watch out for. During my visits, that's the part of my pastoral ministry I enjoy the most. It's the preaching I dread the most. But I have a degree. The part of my pastoral ministry I really enjoy is the visit. Going alongside people. Talking with people. Listening to people. And I have gathered this remark from a number of brethren and a number of sisters. And they said this. 
Do you really enjoy what's going on in the tabernacle of the moon? We enjoy the spirit of unity. We enjoy experiencing the blessing of God. We enjoy the fact we have so many children now in the fellowship. It's great to see so many young people in the fellowship, and not only young people, but young people getting involved. And this has been brought to my notice, and I'll tell you, they didn't have to bring it to my notice because I see it. And they keep saying to me, George, I can look back to a day when we used to sit in this church with nothing only empty pews in the front of us. What we have today, this man, brother, said to me, was, we thought we'd never see it again. Well, I'll tell you this, it's not of George McConnell, if that's what you think. What we have, what we enjoy, it's not of me, it's of the Lord. But we need to be careful, child of God, because what we have, what we enjoy, we need to be careful this morning, that we don't lose it. Because there's Baptist churches, I, Baptist churches, I'll tell you, if there's any denominations, I not enough my own. And they've emptied their churches of young people. There's no time for young people. And they're going nowhere the day. We need to be careful. Because as many precious things we have today in this fellowship, we need to watch and guard with. But the first thing the Lord wants us to look at here is the distraction that may have caused. That was the cause. You know, in some way, this woman was distracted. Maybe it was a knock on the door. Maybe it was a child crying. Maybe a hundred and one different reasons as to why she was distracted. We don't know. But I'll tell you something distracted her. Something turned her attention away from these ten pieces that caused her to lose this precious one thing. So easy to be distracted, child of God. Remember David the psalmist in 2 Samuel chapter 11. He was distracted by a fancy woman. And he lost his walk with God. So easy to lose that which you possess lately. David, he lost his walk by being distracted by a beautiful woman. Then you read 2 Kings 6, I think it is. 2 Kings 6. You'll, you, yes, you remember the man he was, who was falling the beam. He was falling the beam, and he was swinging away, and he was swinging away until, child of God, until the axe head flew off and went into the river, and it left his service useless. He was so engrossed in his service until the most important thing was lost, and he was left useless. No boys like me can be like that, you know. Pastors aren't perfect. We're far from perfect. And sometimes we can get so engrossed in sermon preparation and we're so engrossed in taking meetings and running and doing missions and we're running here and we're running there and we're running everywhere else and sometimes we can lose the cutting edge of prayer. so busy in the work of the Lord and listen to me you can be so distracted in the work of the Lord that you could lose the most important part of it all and that's a prayer and no servant of God is any use and it doesn't matter how gifted he is or talented he is he's useless if he doesn't have the axe head of a prayer Our friend, you can lose it through sin. David lost his walk through sin. We 
man in Second Kings lost the axe head through service. He was distracted by service. But let's think of Mary and Joseph this morning. Don't forget they lost Christ one. They lost him. And they knew Mary and Joseph. They knew all about who the Lord Jesus was, that he was the promised Messiah, that he was God's son. I but they lost him. Ah, they lost. And the Bible, there's a wee, there's a wee phrase and it says, supposing him to be in the company. Do you know what happened to them? They took it for granted that he was with them. They were back up at Jerusalem every year. This is the twelfth year. And he went back, back up every year, every year to the feast of the Passover. And it was like every other year they went up, he was with them. And coming back again, Aquila is the same as every other year that we're supposing he's in the company. And he wasn't in the company at all. He no children. You see, keeping this close fellowship with the Lord Jesus is a daily, it's a daily, and it's an early, and it's a moment by moment action. They didn't lose their relationship because you can't do that. But they lost their friends. Children of God, listen to me. We came to you this morning and you don't get to sleep. And I'm saying this is your pastor this morning. These things the Lord had to tell me to let you areas of no Christianity. And I was in the grounds of the kingdom. I being distracted by what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I tell you, I love it with all my heart. But it's so easy to be distracted. The distraction of those who pray. Secondly, the dilemma that was concerned. You know, there's something about this wee woman I love about her. I'll tell you what I loved about her. She was honest. Here is a woman this morning who knew she had lost one piece and she was big enough to say and admit she lost. You know, although this woman this morning, watch the picture carefully, listen to the parable carefully. She had nine sitting there, safe and sound, but the nine didn't content her. She didn't bury her head in the sand and say, Ah, well, sure, I've got nine, so what does one matter? No, no, no. The one was as precious as the nine. No, one was as precious as the nine. And I can hear this wee woman, maybe it's in the morning time, maybe it's near dinner time, and I can hear the cry go up, where has it gone? I've lost one. Do you know something, child of God? It should be the dilemma of our hearts this morning. If we lost the joy of the Lord, it should be the dilemma in our hearts if we lost our love for the Lord. We shouldn't be content that we've lost our love. Too many boys today, they're saying, Ach, well, sure, I'm saved anyway, what matters? They're content just letting the world go by. Here's a wee thought. Have you lost maybe your vision for the lost? Now, there's one for you. You used to have a vision for the lost. You used to have a burden for the lost. Ah, but you've lost it. You've lost it. You know, there's one thing I want to ask you. I want someone ask you what you need to see in this parable. That coin didn't disappear like a magician's coin. It didn't just disappear. It was somewhere within reach. It was still there. But where? Even though she couldn't possess it, she had it there. She had it in her hand. It didn't disappear. She lost it. But it was still within me. And I'll tell you something else. 
there wasn't content. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you what there was. Even though she wasn't content, she was concerned. She was concerned for the young man. Who concerned this man? Who concerned that you have no vision for the lost? Are you concerned this morning that you have no care? You once had? And there's no bigger comfort that could lose your care life than the man in the house of the country. I don't point my finger at you because I have no finger at pointing back. Maybe you've lost your joy in the life. Maybe you've lost your walk with the Lord. Here's the challenge this morning. Are you concerned that he's not right? This woman, you know, was concerned. Paul had to ask the church of Galatia, where is the blessedness that you speak of? Where is it? You talked about it. Where is it now? I love getting among the older believers here. Men that were about when Nicholson was about it. Men like that. Boys, when there was a move of God, souls were being seen. There was an excitement. Not here then. You know, I remember sitting under the pastoral ministry of Ivan Pump. Six and a half years. And if there's ever a man's ministry I enjoyed it was. You know something? We're off to talk about it yet. We never appreciated him. Until the Lord took him and sent him to Rock Hill. That's when he really was. What's he doing? was a dilemma that was concerning. But listen to this. There was the determination that was pushing. Look at verse 8 again. Either what woman have in ten pieces of silver shall lose one piece. Doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently. He was determined. He was determined to find her by trip she was going to get. She was going to pay. But I'm going to tell you one thing now about this parable that we need to all take on board this week. This parable here, you'll never find this woman blaming anybody else for her loss. Why did a mark her? She is not blaming anybody else for her loss. She's not running to the neighbors, blaming them. She's blaming nobody else for her loss. And then sometimes we're, we're too good at blaming the world. The problem lays at the room. That's it lays at me. But look at the first thing she does. She puts a bit of light onto the subject. She lights it down. She says, if I ain't going to find this, I need to get a bit of light. But she lights the candle, and she starts it. You know what the Bible says in Psalm 119, 130? The entrance of thy word is given to light. My mother says, still does. She says, my house is spotless when the lights are on. When the lights go on, oh, you think about it. Because you see, the light is it exposes everything. And she lights the candle and she sees things perhaps in the home that shouldn't be there. And not only does she light the candle, she can tell you what actually goes to the booth for the brew. She sees things there that shouldn't be there, she starts to sweep the meeting room. Get the word of God 
God this morning and you get before the word of the Lord, you're probably saying the word of the Lord is saying things into your heart and into your life. That's why we don't have the peace. That's why we don't have the power. That's why. Because the Bible's showing things up that shouldn't be in our lives. And that's just covering that with the rest of the In old eastern houses years ago, they used to have mops on the floor. And I talked about sweeping, she swept the house. A commentator said she got down on her knees and one by one she lifted the mats and turned the mats over. And I tell you, when you get down on your knees, that's the first place where you can move. Talk about your life. Talk about the move of God. You know what's wrong with a whole lot of us? We're not desperate enough. Not desperate. See if we were desperate, we would prepare me from the first and eighth. We were desperate. Here's the fourth thing I want to bring out, the disturbance that was challenging because she swept the house. She saw things that shouldn't have been there and it challenged her because they were there because it shouldn't have been there. When you're sweeping the house, you're taking things away, you're brushing things away. There's things in my life I need to get rid of. There's things in all of our lives we all need to get rid of. You know, I remember, remember when the angel came to Gideon, the Lord be with thee, he said, I may be my mom and father. What did Gideon come back with? Gideon, he complained that the Lord be with us, and why all this evil be fallen us? And where, where be all the miracles in our father's pool? That's the way Gideon talked. Gideon is talking about, if the Lord be with us, where be all the miracles we heard happened years ago? Where is all the miracles that, that our fathers told us that they seen years ago? We're living in a different day now. That's what's wrong. Oh, no, we're not living in a different day. Yeah, dear. No, no, not at all. God hasn't changed. Here's the answer, Gideon, why you're not seeing the miracles as what your fathers did. Here's the answer, Gideon. Here's the answer. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. That's why they won't see me do And that's why they lost the blessing and the power and the praise of the Lord. I love the way the story ends. Because there is a delight that was crowning. Look at verse 9. And when she had found the Lord, glory to God. That's the same thing you've lost. That's why you can still find it. You can still possess it again. You can possess that smile again. You can possess that joy again. Listen, it's just a matter of looking for it. And it's just a matter of wanting it, desperately wanting it again. Oh, I love this wee story. Because there's a lot in this wee story. It leaves in my heart. My heart, that moves. Here's the great truth behind this parable and this anything. This parable begins with a woman who loses something that she wants to get. That's how it begins. It begins with a woman who lost something that she wants to get. And it ends 
with this same woman possessing that something of her own flesh. What a lovely picture. It begins with a woman who had lost something that she once possessed. And it ends her with possessing something that she once had lost. How great it is. Whatever you've lost, child of God, whatever I've lost, here's the good news. And here's the good news. We can have it again. We can possess it again. How glory to God will be able to rejoice again. Yes, what we ought to do as the people of God and enjoy the Christian life that God wants us to enjoy. May the Lord richly bless His word. It's not my word, it's His word. May He bless it to our hearts and to our lives for His name's sake. Amen. We're going to